Are we excited to be in God's presence today? Yes. I realize that God always wants to speak to us. And we must always listen. You know, because we get distracted. But God is always, you know, passionately seeking after us. Whether we are old or we are young. Nobody is too old for God. Amen. Amen. You're not too young for the Lord to use you. Amen. Amen. So you're welcome to the month of labor. I don't know what you think when you look at that word. Some of us may think, what in word? Labor. I don't want to labor. <laughs> I just want to chill and rest. Isn't it? So we might look at it and see it as a negative word, you know, because labor means uh, hard work, yes. isn't it? Yes. Or laborious, you know, something that is very tedious or difficult, but that's not what the Lord is saying to us. I want us to look at, look at the word as the Lord sees the word. There's something, there's a message that is contained in that word, labor. And we're just going to look at a bit of it today. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll start from there. And I'll read from verse 14. It says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit. To the ruin of the hearers, verse 15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me try and explain those two verses before I move on. I'll start from verse 15. So Paul wrote this book to Timothy, his son, that he brought up in the law. And he, charged, he gave him a charge. He said, be diligent. That's labor. Be diligent. Work hard. At what? Chasing after shadows? No. What, what is God asking us to be diligent in doing? He said, be diligent to present yourself to God. Are you saying, I need diligence? to be approved of God? God says yes. There are some things that I need to do for God to be pleased with me. And what I need to do, God is not going to do that for me. This morning, Pastor was talking to us about some of us try to do the work of God or the work of the Holy Spirit. There's something I need to do and there's something the Holy Spirit only can do. So, he's saying, be diligent to present yourself. So today we've all come to present ourselves to God. Every day we wake up and we present ourselves to God, I hope. So be diligent. Work hard. Put in every effort. Every attempt to ensure that you present yourself approved of God. So why do you work hard at presenting yourself to the Lord? Because you want God's approval. There are two approvals that you can get. You can get man's approval or God's approval. When you please men, they approve of you. But when you please God, he approves you. May the Lord approve us. Amen. He said, a worker. You are a worker. What are you working at? Who are you serving? Who are we serving? God. We are working for God. So most of us, apart from those who are retired and senior citizens, we have work that we do. We work for an employer. 
we are an employee or we are a business person. We run a business. There's something that you're working at physically. But God is saying you are also my own worker. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. May we not be ashamed in the day of reckoning. Amen. God is looking for workers that will not be ashamed. God is looking for workers that he himself will approve. So for God to approve us, he means that we have to work in a certain way. Is that right? Amen. For your employer to approve of you, you've got to keep to the policies, the principles of your organization, isn't it? Amen. The same applies to God. Working in the vineyard of God means that we have to apply and live our lives by His principles. Amen. And what happens to a worker who doesn't know the principles of the or the culture of the organization? Who is that? Okay. But God is very patient with us. He said, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does that mean? To rightly divide the word of truth means that you are able to apply the word of God into situations that come to you or face you. Does that make sense? Yes, so, in order to be able to apply God's word into my life, and into situations around me to make my world and those around me their lives better, then I really need to know God's word. If I don't know it, I can't apply it. And that's wisdom. So not only is God saying we need to be hard workers for him, he's saying we've got to be wise workers. Have you seen people that work so much and they have nothing to show for it? I see it all the time. And they lose their family and they lose their health and they lose everything and they're still working really hard and nothing to show for it. That's what happens when you think you can run your business without God. When you think you can live your life without God, you'll be working so hard and still yet you have nothing to show for it. Psalm 127 verse 1 tells us, it says, except the Lord builds, they labor in vain that build. Except the Lord builds. So I don't know what we want to build. Or what we're building. If you're doing it without God's involvement, you will keep doing it until death comes. We don't want to do that. I don't want to. I want, if you do it God's way, you get God's profit. Amen. If you do it your way, you get your profit, which is nothing compared to what God wants to give you. So let's go back to that verse 15. It says, We must be diligent as workers. To present ourselves to God so that He can approve us. Alright? So that means we must work hard and be wise workers that will be approved of God and then we can rightly apply His word to situations. What do some people waste their energy on? Look at verse 14. He says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord. Not to strive about what to no profit. You can get involved in arguments and discussions that will bring no profit. And you will be wasting energy. You will be wasting your energy. Is it worth it? No. 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 There are some discussions I don't want to go into. Because I know it's not going to profit me. And I stop it. That's right. I don't have time. I don't have time to go into such discussions. I only have time for what is profitable for the kingdom. Amen. What is profitable for you, what is profitable for me, what is profitable for the Father. Amen. If it's not profitable, I don't want to engage in such discussions. Amen. So, and same applies to you. Don't engage in discussions that do not profit. God says, remind them of these things. Charge them before the Lord, not to strive about what to no profit. Do you discuss about other people and break them down behind closed doors, in your room, on your bed, in your living room? Do you think about others and you think evil of them? Those things will not, you're just wasting your energy. Also, we waste our energy on worrying about things that don't matter. One of the Gospels reminded us, he said, don't worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for today is the evil in it. Deal with that first with God. Forget about tomorrow. Because who wants tomorrow? God. God has already taken 
taking care of tomorrow. Amen. A few days ago, I had a patient that came to me and I thought that what she said was profound. And she said to me, she came to discuss her test results and I said, don't worry. There is nothing to worry about. She said, oh, don't worry. Because worry is a waste of time and energy. I said, I agree. <laughs> so, I want to remind you, anytime you start worrying, just know that you are wasting time and you are wasting energy. Because worrying is not going to change it anyway. So, what's the point? Okay, let's come back. So, there are some things we don't waste our labor and energy on. Like, talking down one another. Thinking evil about one another. And there are some things that we need to spend our energy on. Laboring for the kingdom. Amen. 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 Are we together? Yes, Lord. Look at verse 16. It says, But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. When you engage in discussions that will take you nowhere, you know, they are just idle discussions. Or people, you sit with people that are mocking God. Or you sit with people that, 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 that hate your God. He says, there's no point in arguing and, and just wasting time on such discussions. Because it will increase to more ungodliness. Verse 17, and their message will spread like cancer. I see the power of words here. You know, you can say something about your sister or your brother in church and you spread a message like cancer. You pollute their minds, pollute their family, pollute people, and you push them away from God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. With the same mouth that we used to bless, we can use it to curse others. Yes, yes. And God doesn't want that because you will not be building for God. You are destroying what God is building if you do that. <coughs> and may such person not be named among us. Amen. 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 And their message will spread like cancer. What message are you are you propagating? What message are we are we giving out to the world? Somebody spoke to me on the phone during the week and said, is this person a Christian? Because of the way she spoke to her. So let's be careful the message we are communicating to others. Not just what we say, but by our lifestyles. What principles to live by are we leaving behind? Let me jump to verse uh, 19. Says, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. Are you His? Are you God's? Are you abiding by His principles of hard work and applying the word of truth? Said, so let everyone who is God, who names the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin, gross wickedness. So if you are naming the name of Christ and you are living in sin and you are living in iniquity and gross wickedness, there's something the Lord wants you to do. My title is Prepare Your Vessel. Prepare Your Vessel. God wants us to be active. God doesn't want us to be passive children. He wants us to be active in His kingdom. And we need to do it by God's principles according to His books. Amen. Amen. What, what vessel do I have to prepare? Let's look at verse 20. It says, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. If somebody brings you vessels, and they bring gold and silver and wood and clay, which one will you take? Gold and silver. Why? Because they are precious. So, you, we've got in this great house vessels, different types of vessels. Some vessels are of gold and silver, some are wood, some are clay. Some vessels for honor and some for dishonor. So, they have different uses. So, the vessels that are for honor, you use them for honorable things. And there are some vessels that are not useful. Because they are for dishonor. Verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter. What is the latter? He's talking about dishonor. If anyone cleanses himself, he will be a vessel for honor. What does God want us to do be? He wants us to be a vessel for honor. 
a vessel that honors him. Sanctified. What sanctified? Set apart. So that vessel that honors God must be set apart, consecrated, and useful for the master. Of what use is a vessel if it's not useful? What's the purpose of a vessel? You might as well just pack it away. Say, so useful for the master. God is preparing vessels that will be useful for his purpose. And prepared for every good work. Your vessel that the Lord wants you to prepare must be ready for every good work. Amen. 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 So, verse 21 again. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, what do we need to do in order to be a vessel of honor? Cleanse ourselves. Now, how do we cleanse ourselves? By the word of God. Amen. Amen. You cleanse yourself by the word of God. How many days, how, how often do you clean naturally or physically? We all clean every day. We go to the bathroom and clean every day, isn't it? Otherwise, we start stinking. It's the same thing. If we don't cleanse every day by the word of God, before we know it, we're not growing, we're, we're stunted Christians, and we're of no use, of no good to the world. Does that make sense? Yes. So the Lord wants us to cleanse our vessels by his word. He said, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, from dishonor, any sin, anything that brings dishonor to God, you separate yourself from it. He said, you will be a vessel for honor. So in order for you to be a vessel for honor in God's hands, the one that God jealously guard over, you need to separate yourself from everything that dishonor God. If you don't, you cannot be a vessel that the Lord will use. And I tell you, God is looking for vessels to save this world. He's looking for vessels. We complain that the world is upside down. God is counting on you and depending on you to put it right side up. But before you can fix the world, you need to fix yourself first. I need to fix myself. And how do I fix myself? By daily cleansing by the world. It's not a one-off thing. That's why he says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the world. The word of God is not one that you hear on Sunday alone and you think you are fixed for the week. No. It's one that you hear on a daily basis. You cleanse yourself on a daily basis. It's an active, ongoing thing. Amen. Amen. So the Lord requires us to cleanse. Maybe your vessel is not clean. Maybe your vessel is dishonor. God is saying, if you clean yourself, if I clean myself from dishonor, from sin and iniquity, then I will be a vessel for honor. Sanctified, set apart. You know when you are set apart for the Lord, the presence of God is with you. When you are set apart. And what is it in the world that can stand against you? Nothing. 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 When you are set apart, God is with you. You are united. With the mind of God. Amen. That's one prayer I want us to start praying for, for one another because we have been praying that prayer for every one of us in this church. Mm. That your heart, and I'll show you that scripture in your minutes, that your heart will be united with the Father. Amen. That your heart will be united with Jesus. Amen. Jesus prayed that prayer for his disciples. Mm. He said, I pray for them that they will be one with us. Amen. That in us they will be perfect. Amen. When your mind is united with the Father, then you begin to think like the Father. Amen. You begin to operate at a higher level. Amen. God begins to give you insight into things that will happen. Yes. Amen. These things are possible. Yes. Possible. When you tell people the Lord speaks to me, they wonder, ah, oh. God speaks to you. Oh. Yes. God wants to show you things to come. Yeah. One of us, I'll quickly give that testimony. Mm. She told us that God said, Go for this test. The Spirit of the Lord nudged her to go for a test. She went for the test. If she had to the Spirit of, of, of the Lord, it would have been a different story in years to come. 
I won't give too much details, but the Lord speaks to us. How do you hear God? You hear God when your heart, your mind unites with Jesus. Amen. You begin to think like Him. Amen. 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 So vessel for honor is the one that is sanctified. Is the one that is useful for the master. Amen. So for you to be useful for the master, you first have to be sanctified. You first have to be cleansed. Jesus said in John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So what sanctifies us is the word of truth. Amen. Amen. So when you're sanctified, you'll be useful for the master and you'll be prepared for every good work. God is looking, God wants the church to be prepared for every good work. The young people, you might be thinking, what is this auntie talking about? It's even over our heads. Look at it. Your goal is verse 22. The Bible says, flee also youthful lust. Young people are under so much pressure, youthful lust. Because all their friends, they are recently, do you know that a uh, few days ago, within the last one week, six people died of drug-related problem. Leon C, Westcliff, Canvey, Ben Fleet, all around us, six people. Please, don't, don't ever do drugs, young people. It, it destroys. The Bible wants us, it says, flee also youthful laws. God wants to use our young people. Yes. He wants to use you. You can sing, you know, you can talk, yeah. you can do those things for Jesus. Yes. You, all your friends may be doing what this stuff you don't have, you are not your friends, you're different, you're peculiar, you're special. Yeah. You're prince and princesses of God. Yeah. You've got to stand out. Yes. So the Bible wants us. It's not just for young people, even adults. You know, you can be married and you can still be living in immorality. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you don't cleanse and set yourself apart. It says, flee also youthful lusts. Every lustful thing that this world wants to offer us. When the enemy came to Jesus, he said, if only you will bow to me. I'll give you, look at it. Look at all this. Look at all this. Just bow to me and they will be yours. The devil still does the same thing with us today. Say, if you do that and do that and do that and do that, then you, you, you'll be able to have everything you want in this world. And you have no peace. Of what, of what use is everything in the world without peace? Amen. Yeah. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness. So we flee youthful lust, and what do we pursue? Righteousness. Faith. Love, peace with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. 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 Jesus said in John 6 27, He said, Do not labor for the food that perishes. We see today that many people are laboring for food that perishes. Isn't it? What we eat, what we drink, what we wear, and then. We push God aside. Those food, all those things that we are exercising our labor on, they will perish. But what should we labor on? Look at what Jesus said, John 4, 34. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So God wants us to labor on doing his will and on doing his work. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. And you know what? When you do that, it gives you so much more back Amen. that the world can never give you. Mm. I'll just, let's look at John chapter 4. I'll give the example of this lady. John chapter 4. We used it in the Bible study this morning. You know the woman by the Samaria well? Mm -hmm. No. She had, suffered, she had labored and labored and labored for the food that perished. She had struggled and struggled and struggled in her marriage. From one man to another, yet she was not satisfied. That is laboring for the food that perished. And one day she had an encounter with Jesus. And in verse 13 and 14, Jesus said to her, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water, will thirst again. The things that you labor for physically can never satisfy you. 
as much as what the Lord gives. Verse 14 says, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Do you want to drink? And how big is your vessel that you want to use to drink? Big or small? You know some people will study one verse of the Bible. I mean, it's good for a start. But if you have been years in the Lord and you are still studying just one verse every day, there's a, you won't grow. That's the truth. You can't expect God to give you more than what you are giving him. You want to drink? Okay, you can drink with a little cup like this. Or you can drink a big bottle. Isn't it? The same way. So when you study your Bible, you are, you are thirsty. You want to drink. When you take one verse, that's not enough. Go for more. Go for more. The Bible says with joy, you will draw water out of the well of salvation. Because that's your life. That's your strength. That's where insight. God will just show you. It might be your dream. It might be a word. God will show you things to do to succeed. But without God, you'll be struggling. You'll be trying to fix it yourself. That was what happened to this woman. She labored and labored and labored and still she was not satisfied. Five marriages she found herself in with living with a man. After five marriages, she was still not satisfied. And Jesus said, I know what you need. What you need is to drink of me. Mm-hmm. Said, I tell you, verse 14, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give, who gives the water? Jesus. Jesus. Who is the water? The Holy Ghost. Jesus. Said, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give will never thirst. Mm-hmm. It means that, in fact, let me finish it. For the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Everything that you will need to succeed spiritually and physically, all round success and prosperity will not come without the Holy Ghost. When Jesus left, he gave us the Holy Ghost. For a reason. And when the Holy Ghost is inside of you, because you're drinking from the Lord, the Holy Spirit will be springing up in you and be giving you ideas. Business ideas. You just hear a word. Sister T had a word that Pastor preached one day and started her business. She's got a testimony today. Just a few weeks ago. Amen. Amen. The word of God can illuminate it. It will just come to you as an idea. You grab it, it's like a seed that will become a mighty tree. Amen. So drink. Say drink. 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 Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give yes. him will never thirst. That's right. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. As I begin to round up, so I've, I've spoken about laboring. God does not want us to labor just physically for vanity. He said, come to me, all you are laboring for such. And I'll give you rest. I know what you need. My yoke, my teaching is what you need. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Just take that. So what we need to do is to labor to enter into God's rest. And how we do that is to drink his word. Is to be a vessel that is set apart. That is cleansed by his word from sin. And all those things that dishonor us. So that we will be a prepared vessel that God can use. When God brings anyone to your across your path to encourage, you will say, Ah, hold on, I don't know that scripture. Hold on, hold on. What it is is going to spring out of you. Amen. Amen. You are ready because the Lord will bring people across us. He will bring people along our path. And if we are not ready, if we don't know the word, if we are not drinking of his spirit. If the spirit is not springing up life in us, what have, we, what have we got to offer to the world? And today the church is powerless because they have turned the church to social gathering. It's a place where we come to drink of God's spirit. It's not just a place of social gathering or fashion parade. So the Lord is calling us. Are you going to be a prepared vessel? Or are you going to leave to be a vessel of dishonor? Or a vessel of honor? In 2 Timothy 2, verse 6, 
if we project that. Verse 6. 2 Timothy 2, verse 6. It says, The hardworking farmer must be forced to partake of the crops. <laughs> God rewards those that seek Him. Amen. Amen. When you seek the Lord, Amen. when you labor in His Word, Amen. when you live your life to please Him, Amen. when you are approved of Him, He will reward you. Amen. Not just with spiritual stuff, but with physical stuff as well. Amen. So seek you first the kingdom of God mm. and His righteousness. And all these things that the Gentiles are chasing after, mm. they will be chasing after you. Amen. Shall we pray? Mm. I want us to pray. The Lord make me, I want to be a prepared vessel. And you're not going to do what I need to do. There are some things I need to do. I need to get myself right. I need to cleanse myself, my vessel from sin, from foolish discussions, from things that are not profitable. And I need to focus on knowing your word and drinking of your spirit so that your spirit can become in me a well of water, living water, springing up unto everlasting life. So that I'll be useful, ready for the master's use, prepared for every good work. Father, we just bring our vessels unto you. And we ask for your mercy where we have gone wrong. Sometimes we serve you as if you are a beggar. As if you're begging us to serve you. We live our lives as if there is no tomorrow. We chase after shadows and things that will never satisfy. Oh, that we will get our priorities right. Oh, that our eyes and the heart and the eyes and the minds of our children and young people will be set on you. You have a greater purpose for us. Oh, that we will know this greater purpose and walk with you. Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Oh, that this will be our will. That our hearts will be united with Jesus. That we will have the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God, raise up out of us. This act. Vessels that are prepared. To serve you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.15 says. One translation says. Do your best to present yourself to God. It's all about what you can do to be pleasing to God. It's not a time to fold your hands and you're thinking that other people will do it for you. From this month, we are going to be looking more into labor. Labor is not a negative word, it means that you work for, for it. He said, said the liberal. He that liberal, he that liberal, liberate for himself. If you don't pray and you expect somebody to pray for you, is that how things work? It's not an emergency prayer. You make prayer your lifestyle. If Zacchaeus did not run to Jesus, was he not the only one that climbed the second one tree? Why did he do it? Because he wanted to see who Jesus was. Labor or pay? It pays to walk. A lot of people today, including their children, children, they are poor. Why? Because they have been taught that not working, they can be on welfare. So they are on welfare, their children are on welfare, the next generation are work on welfare. Bible says the hand of the diligent shall be a root. God wants you to be a work, a, 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 a good worker. Say so a workman, rightly dividing the work, rightly the work, dividing the word of truth. In other words, that is what a workman does. Say so the husbandry man, the one that work hard, the work, the farmer that is working hard must be. Everyone say must be, must be the first partaker. Of the future. Work pays. It pays to work. 
So to be a child of God, to be a, an effective Christian in this modern age, <laughs> it's a work. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work. If you don't study your Bible, and you just come into church, before long, you begin to sing like other people are singing. But you have to make it different. You have to stand up that this Bible must not just be up with your house. It says study. Everyone says study. study. That's what 2 Timothy 2.15 says. Make effort. Do your best. Another one says work hard. If it's not work, if it's not a hard work, you will not have to do it. He said work hard. So you can present yourself to God and receive His approval. <laughs> one of the reasons why prayers are not being uh, uh, heard and answered is because the people praying, they themselves are lazy. God cannot give to you what you have not prayed for. Otherwise, blessing will be by luck. But blessing is not by luck. It's by effort. Amen? Amen. Rather, it's by grace. The grace of God. You see? But what is important is, we are not promoting work over grace. Don't get that wrong. And grace is not a license for laziness. Don't get that wrong as well. Right? But what all we're saying and what we'll be looking at this month is more about your interest in serving God. Putting interest into Bible study. Putting interest into prayer. If there's nothing for you to do, why would Philippians 2, I believe 15, says, For it is God that is working in us. So, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Even Jesus Christ said, My father walked until now. How many people have read that in the Bible? God is a hard worker. <laughs> Amen? He, he wants us to walk. He said, go to the hands. You, you slogan. Don't <coughs> fold your hand. So if you don't study the scripture, you cannot improve it. Amen? Amen? So please, in this month, we want to, look, we want to begin to look at the things, thank you, to 13, for it is God who works in you. Even God is working. Amen? Amen. So whose example are you copying? Even God is working. So that's why we don't just come to church, we study the Bible to grow. Otherwise, why will you, how are you going to tell people about God? The God you don't know. Just by told that woman in the well of Samaria, said you worship the God you don't know. Can you imagine people worshiping God that they don't know? Do you know the God you are worshiping? If you know the God you are worshiping, then serve him. Elijah said, if God be God, worship him. Or if it is Baal, worship Baal. Hallelujah. God deserves our worship. God deserves our heart. So put your heart into it. And that's what we are going to be looking more into this morning. Thank you so much. It's been a good time. Which is still bright. Okay. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen.